Hello and welcome to this podcast from Blackwell Online. My name is George Miller, and my guest today is Cambridge Classics Professor Mary Beard. Alongside teaching students, researching and writing her prize-winning books, her book on Pompeii won this year's Wolfson Prize for History, or appearing on radio, Mary somehow managed to find time a couple of years ago to begin writing a blog, A Don's Life, which appears on the TLS website. The blog's been a hit, and in November 2009, the book of the blog is being published. Mary told me about being asked to write it by the TLS editor, Peter Stoddart. I'm surprisingly obedient when it comes to editors of newspapers. And so I said yes, but I was fully confident that it wouldn't... You know, I just thought this would be a three-month wonder and then I shall have given up this. And I have to say I was slightly suspicious of the whole medium. You know, I thought... I don't usually think have thoughts about dumbing down, but if I was to think about dumbing down, a blog would have been what dumbing down was about. But so I kind of felt, I felt, well, I'm going to give it a try because that's what I've been asked to do, but this isn't going to be for me, is it? And what, when you decided to give it a try, what did you think you were going to try out? Did you have, a, did you have an idea of the kind of things that you wanted to um, expand upon? I was, I was terribly ignorant. I mean, I suppose... I thought, insofar as I thought I could write about anything, I thought I could write about what it was like working in a university because you know, people have such terrible preconceptions, particularly of Oxford and Cambridge, you know, that you know, we're swanning around in pumps in the afternoon, quaffing port in the evening, um, dressing up in silly clothes and mm. you know, occasionally making a trip to the mm. library. I thought it'd be, it would be fun to show how that wasn't true. And I thought it would also be fun to talk about the ancient world sort of as discoveries happen. There's even in newspapers, there's quite a long lead time. You know, somebody mm. discovers a bus of some Roman in the bottom of a river. Yeah, and it's still tomorrow or the next day before you can get it into a paper. And in academic life, it would be, you'd be writing about it. Well, you might write about it instantly, but it would come out in two years' time. So the idea of, having instant response mm. particularly because people talk such tosh about classics on the radio you know even the venerable kind of things like the today program you know they always fall for the for the obvious simple and uh, and apparently charismatic solution mm. you know here we have found a new sculpture it must be julius caesar and the pleasure of being able to say at 850 after you've heard mm. this rubbish at 830 mm. look come on think again how do we identify a sculpture that seemed quite fun and what about the interactive element of it? Was that something you were sort of taking on board at the start? Or is that something that sort of surprised you? Well, I, I suppose, because I wasn't really a blogger before, I mean, I'm not having, I mean, a blogger in the sense of not having read blogs, I didn't quite realise about the interactive element. I didn't sort of realise that part of the game was people writing in. But then, obviously, before I started, I wasn't stupid. I looked around what kind of blogs there were on the market and discovered that that was a huge part of it, not just... A pos- not, not just one of the possibilities of the blog, but that was very the kind of key element in it. And I was horrified, actually, when I looked at this stuff, because most of the comments, especially when there were loads and loads of them, you know, you know perfectly decent article, you know, on the Guardian blog site, and a hundred rants following it of uh, people simply kind of splurging with prejudice often not particularly related to what the blog said and I thought this is all very well but when it's actually ranting at you maybe this won't be very pleasant yeah getting up at breakfast and turning on the turning on the computer and just discovering a load of abuse you know is that is that what you need so I was a bit tentative but of course you know you you you're torn two ways, aren't you? Because I also wanted comments, because that was clearly the, you know, the mm-hmm. sign of success. You know, mark of success is having comments, and so, so there's kind of a bit of ambivalence here. But I don't know why, but for the most part, my commenters weren't, haven't turned out to be the ranting kind. And in fact, I mean, I think and this isn't just false modesty. I think some of the best things that have come from the blog to the book have actually been the comments because they've engaged, you know, wittily, funnily, intelligently with the points that I've been making. Sometimes I think upstaging my uh, my original post, you know, with a well-aimed dart. And they come from all walks of life and all over the world. That's what's really amazing about it. 